Hello everyone, I'm Sanchika. I'm from Echo India. Welcome to the Cypher Echo webinar on good and replicable and innovative practices of tobacco control in India. Today, uh, we have our guest speaker joined with us, uh, Mr. Ranjit Singh, who is an advocate in the Supreme Court of India. And we'll be talking about a topic of a journey of cigarettes and other, and other tobacco control uh, products in the country. Uh, I would like to invite Mr. Arun Barma, who's the Director of Finance and Operations in the Cypher, for opening remarks. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Arun Barma from Team Cypher. I, on behalf of the organizer, you know, extend a very warm welcome to our chief guest to today's webinar, Dr. Adarshkur, who is a Director of Health Services Punjab. I am sure that under her leadership, uh, the work long way and to, for, the, for, for furthering the cause of the tobacco control in the state as well as in the country. I also welcome Dr. Jaskaran Deep Randhawa, who is an SNO Punjab and whose good work in this field is very well known to everyone and who, which has always been shared on this platform many times. I welcome Mr. Ranjit Singh, eminent lawyer, Supreme Court, who is an a subject expert and who will be delivering his experience on this and how the this field has progressed up to date. I also welcome Dr. Rakesh Gupta, who is a President Cypher, former Director of Health Services, I, as well Dr. Sanchia Gupta, who is a Program Coordinator, Echo India, who is the co who is the host for today's function. And uh, Echo is the platform you know, with whom we will be conducting twelve such webinars in the coming days after every fortnight. I welcome Mr. Rajiv Chaudhary, who is a program coordinator at RCTC, who will be the moderator for today's question answer session. I welcome also Mr. Nardeep Singh, who is a, from the team Cypher, who is at the back and support for this webinar. I also welcome eminent participants who have participated. And so far, I think we have around 25 participants. And as the semi, as this webinar progress, we are likely to have no, 32 at this moment. As the webinar progress, we are likely to have around 50 or 50 plus as in the previous webinars we had. I also welcome the students of the public health who have joined this webinar or who are likely to join this webinar. Uh, I wish everyone a very good time and uh, I am hope that I hope that uh, the you know the knowledge being shared by uh, Mr. Ranji Singh will go a long way and uh, will uh, educate us further on this topic and the up-to-date status of the topic. Thank you so much. Over to Dr. Sanjika. Thank you, sir. Uh, now I would request Dr. Rakesh Gupta, the president of Cypher, to discuss on the objectives of the consultation. Uh, thank you, Dr. Uh, Sanjika. And I welcome our chief guest, uh, Dr. Adarsh Palka. Uh, she is the DHS Punjab and uh, a well-known uh, uh, surgeon also. She's a very eminent surgeon. She has remained a civil surgeon, Mohani. Welcome, um, Dr. Jaskiran and uh, Mr. Ranjit Singh, uh, School of Public and PGA, Amir Chandrika. They have organized a national uh, conclave on best practices in the NTCP, uh, in tobacco control under NTCP. So it was last year. Uh, it was the aim was to complete to compile various best practices. It was a collaborator in that uh, uh, best practices conclave. So we thought that uh, every each and every SNO, each and every DNO, district nodal officer, and all people in public health, they should know about the best practices being practiced in uh, all the different jurisdictions, various states of the country. Uh, so since Cypher was a collaborator, we requested RCTC and ECO to involve us. And uh, so throughout the year, we will be sharing the best practices twice in a month. So it will go on for almost uh, a year. And uh, I hope that public health specialists, the DNOs, the SNOs, and everybody in tobacco control, they will benefit, right? The presentations by experts will help in increasing the awareness and facilitate the cross-learning uh, 
among stakeholders for strengthening the national tobacco control program. And as I told you, even after retirement, so we are still in a learning phase. We are learning from each other. And uh, uh, so it is good that we, we should remain learner and tobacco control is such a vast subject and it uh, involves, it affects all the non-communicable diseases, all non-communicable diseases, including uh, cardiovascular diseases, cancer, stroke, uh, pulmonary diseases, they, they can happen with the tobacco. Now I would request our chief quiz ma'am, Dr. Adarsh Pal, uh, call for, the, for her remarks. Dr. Adarsh Pal is an eminent surgeon and has served as an SMO in the ESI hospital in Mohali and civil surgeon in Mohali for almost two plus years and has brought considerable improvement in the infrastructure and as well as health services in the government sector. Uh, since 20, April 2023, Madam has uh, joined as a director in the Health and Family Welfare Department in the Punjab state. Her main priority is to bring improvement in the health services being provided to, at the grassroots level and also implement state and central health schemes and programs more effectively in the state. A very warm welcome to the ma'am. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Dr. Sansika. And I must thank Dr. Rakesh Gupta for giving me this opportunity to be on this platform, which is very enlightening and pertains to a very good program dealing with public health. I also thank Dr. Arun Verma and Dr. Jaskiran and everyone present here. So I start with the program what we are doing in Punjab. See, in Punjab, we have implemented this program and Punjab is doing quite well regarding this program and prevalence of tobacco use in the state. And in Punjab particularly, this has decreased over the last five years from 19.2% to 12.9%. And I am happy to share that this is the lowest among the state of the in all states of the country. Now, secondly, to bring down this prevalence, what Punjab has done is chalaning, awareness, banning e-cigarettes, out of which we have issued 12,603 chalans till date in uh, 2023. Next is tobacco cessation centers. They are working along with at many districts, along with the psychiatry department and with counselors. We have given them training regarding this. So at the same time, when we are banning tobacco, we are giving the people opportunity to avail this service for which we are planning further improvement so that every each and every psychiatrist should do this job and each and every counselor should counsel regarding this public health program. Now, secondly, Punjab has implemented permanent uh, ban on hookah bar with and became the second uh, state banning this. Then ban on e-cigarettes. Earlier, the e-cigarette were uh, an unattended issue. So Punjab has banned e-cigarette as Dr. Rakesh was telling us that during his tenure, the e-cigarette sellers were issued chalans also, and we have written to Flipkart and all the e-commerce site regarding banning of this. Now, Punjab, we like to be a Punjab, we like Punjab to be a smoke-free zone. There are tobacco-free villages. Till date, we have recorded 739 number of tobacco-free villages in which the panchayats and the people at large, they take care of this aspect. And this is a major deterrent. When people fight for people, when people fight for their own health, there's nothing stopping about the implementation of program with that. So tobacco-free educational institutes, we have uh, like more than 90% educational institute. They have 98% uh, rather they have scored more than 90% in implementation of this program. Then we had a week long campaign in January, which started on 9th of January and went up to 15th January, where we, the, uh, where we stressed upon strict implementation of COTPAC 
so punjab state no tobacco day is observed on 1st of november that is a punjab day so we collaborated this program on the day punjab was formed as a independent state out of haryana and then himachal pradesh so that is our day we celebrate this day november 1 as punjab state no tobacco day so with these initiatives we will look forward to learn from other states how they are doing about this program and we will be happy to share our experience we will happy to learn from other state we will be thankful if we learn some good practices so that this major public health program is taken care of and moreover punjab has incorporated oral health program with ncdcs so for that we have launched a program which every dental doctor in the state especially working at district hospital they have been imparted training to sensitize the issue of oral cancer and uh, up to block level we have taken this all dentists they are all dental doctor they are trained in one day continuous cme regarding this sensitization so that they already know it we know but uh, you have to sensitize doctors again time and again so that they become aware of this major problem we are having increased number of oral cancer cases though not all related to tobacco but uh, tobacco is a major contributing factor to that so if we can control it will be our uh, you know good luck and with these remarks i ask you please to continue with this enlightening cme thank you ma'am for your remarks i would request uh, yes no i dr dr sanchika uh, sorry hmm. to interrupt you we have with us dr rana j singh who is a pioneer in the field of the tobacco control and who is also a deputy regional director from the the union southeast asia um, um, in, in the field of the uh, lungs diseases and the tuberculosis uh, dr rana we welcome you to this seminar please thank you so much welcome thank you doctor thank you varma ji thank you o over to dr sanjita thank you sir now i would request uh, uh, mr ranjit singh who is an advocate in the supreme court of india and an expert of anti tobacco laws in the country mr ranjit singh is an al alumni of national law school bangalore he has been providing support and guidance to the ministry of health nicpr nhfw and other organizations on tobacco control and other public health laws in the country for more than a decade uh, mr singh has contributed in drafting and defending tobacco control and laws banning electronic cigarettes for the government of india he has published multiple studies journals and articles for tobacco control and food safety laws uh, over to you sir thank you sanjita and i thank dr rakhi specifically and sir for for inviting me to present on this uh, topic so uh, i think most of us have are aware of this topic so i would try to make it uh, kind of you know like a story thing how the entire concept was brought into effect why it was brought into effect so yes can you see my screen yes sir okay thank you yes so uh, firstly uh, best practice every practice on tobacco control is a best practice uh, as long as it is productive it's effective and if you see in tobacco control we've had evolution in best practices from time to time uh, new laws have been brought out uh, the states have issued new kind of orders and uh, the uh, new procedures have been implemented we have uh, you, we have laws like which regulate films which regulate uh, electronic cigarettes we have orders like uh, you know the yellow line campaigns so uh, the best practices evolve as per time and this thing and looking at the effectiveness tobacco control specifically if you see is not a legal legal kind of a law it's mostly scientific law so as and when the science developed and you got to know about the harms of tobacco the law also changed so this should be brought into mind that there's a very uh, 
close link between tobacco control laws and scientific evidence. The most of the laws that you see is entirely developed on the fact finding. Even the electronic cigarette law came out when you had an ICMR white paper bringing out into detail. Similarly, you had film rules, uh, uh, law regulating films also brought out when there were evidences showing they were being misused. So similarly, as the science developed and you got to know more harms about tobacco, uh, the law also changed. So uh, I think most of you are aware of, but just to give a background as to why we are doing, you know, why do we have these laws? So the reason we have these laws for controlling tobacco use is primarily because the prevalence is very high, especially amongst youth and children. And this you can see from two surveys that is done periodically by Government of India, Global Adult Tobacco Survey and Global Youth Tobacco Survey. So uh, these are two indicators. Then you have other studies that brought, bring out that how, uh, you know, grave the situation is, especially amongst children. I mean, children less than 10 years old are consuming tobacco and more than 27 crores tobacco users are there. Then the uh, along with the prevalence comes the disease burden. The disease is also, the burden is huge. You have 50% of cancer and 20% of cancer in females. Uh, th that are due to tobacco and uh, almost, uh, you know, India is known as the oral cancer capital of the world because of the chewing tobacco, this thing. All, uh, so 90% of the cancer uh, chewing tobacco is because of the, uh, you know, or oral cancer be is because of the chewing tobacco. Then the other data is the number of deaths and you have over 13.5 lakh deaths every year occurring because of the tobacco. So these are factors uh, uh, that the, the prevalence, the disease burden, and the economics impact. So these are a couple of factors why there is a law which discourages tobacco use. So we are in the mode of discouraging tobacco use and not banning, as Dr. Rakesh was also trying to say. And the banning is a much larger uh, concept where this parallel work is also going on. Maybe we'll have another session where we could do that what how we are working with the farmers, how we are working with beauty workers, etc. But presently, there is a grave situation. There is huge burden. There is huge prevalence. And therefore, there is there are laws that uh, regulate tobacco consumption and its use. So, uh, interestingly, there is also a global treaty. This is one of the only public health treaty, which is there where more than 182 countries are members and they all have come together to have a common kind of laws. They are not always at the same scale or at the same set, but they also are somewhere trying to frame laws. And therefore, that itself should be uh, taken it seriously that globally also there's a huge movement to have some sort of legal framework to regulate tobacco consumption and eventually eradicate its use. And, the, and this law, if you see, whether it is COTPA or the other law, you'll see that a lot of provisions are entirely adopted from FCTC articles. So firstly, it's a science-based law as and when the science on the harm have been developed. And similarly, there's a global movement, there's a global treaty that almost 182 countries are part of this movement of uh, you know, regulating tobacco use. So how did uh, this cigarettes and other tobacco or COTPA, we say, how did the tobacco control law of 2003 came into effect? So first time in 1975, almost 50 years back, when uh, there were a lot of research coming on linking cancer with tobacco use, at that time, government obviously was benefiting from tobacco sale but could not ban it as a whole. So what they did was that it is time they felt responsible and they said it's time we alert the tobacco use. So in 1975, you had the Cigarettes Act, which said for the first time that smoking is injurious to health. And it was there on their advertisement, it was there on the packet. And uh, the statement and object of this uh, uh, law of 75 said 
research carried out in various parts of the world have confirmed there is a relation between smoking of cigarettes and lung cancer. So like I said before, there is this, the laws have developed on scientific evidence. So when you had scientific evidence on smoking being linked to lung cancer, there was this law which came out in 75, which says smoking is injurious to health. A decade, more than a decade later, you had more evidences coming up that not only the person who's smoking, but even the person who's not smoking and who's simply visiting a public place uh, can also be affected and can be equally, if not more, harmed. So this was the new evidence which was emerging. So what happened? There was no law that could stop it. So the court came into picture. And one of the uh, early judgment that we see of the 1990s is from the Kerala High Court, where they held that public smoking or smoking in public place is violation of a non-smoker right to health. So Article 21 of Constitution of India, which guarantees you right to life or right to health, was being violated by somebody who was smoking because he was harming himself. That's okay. But he was also harming you because just because you were visiting a public place. So that taking that com concept of exposure to secondhand smoke, they said it's violation of fundamental right to life. And they uh, they kind of, they banned it saying it's illegal. But since there was no law, they used the IPC section. So the, if you see right now, even COVID time, we use certain IPC section. The genesis of using those IPC section was the judgment of uh, 1990s and section 268 causing public nuisance and section 278 making air noxious to health was which was used there were also air pollution act and motor vehicle acts which was used to you know to check till the law comes out a gap period so evidence first lung cancer now evidence for, uh, second uh, second hand smoke you had law in the gap they use ipc section same time after a year, so Supreme Court also intervened and gave a similar judgment, but Supreme Court was much more stronger. They said that following areas are public places and you are not allowed to smoke in those areas. So they actually identified smoke public places and said you cannot smoke because exposure to secondhand smoke is violation of right to life. So like I said, the, uh, the sign, as and when the scientific evidence is coming, the law is evolving. Same time, you had almost 13 to 12 to 13 states that came out with the state acts. And the title of the state act was very important. Prohibition of Smoking and Protection of Non-Smokers Health Act. Whenever you implement the law on prohibition of public place, have the larger picture in mind that if anybody who's exposed to tobacco smoking and he's a non-smoker or he's just visiting a public place. And public place is any, any, any place where people go as a matter of right and kind of, and could be exposed to tobacco smoke. So any place where you feel that they're exposed to tobacco smoke, the, the uh, basic uh, structure of that is Article 21 of Constitution of India. And therefore, the title of the state law, I think Punjab also added, but title of the state law is very important prohibition of smoking and protection of non-smokers health. You have to protect the non-smokers health and wherever you feel the non-smoker health is not being protected, it's a violation. So, uh, 1975 Act, you had warnings, then you had uh, court judgments and now you have state governments coming with law prohibiting smoking in public places. In this entire picture, there was also discussion going on FCTC, which India was uh, one of the leading party and was leading the South Asian part of the discussions and uh, was very prominent in formalizing the entire framework convention of tobacco control. So the provision that in 2003 they brought out was very similar to what was being discussed. And two important point that came out in this is that we shifted from cigarette to other tobacco products. So uh, in what was the change? So the state laws and other laws was mostly restricted to cigarettes and smoking in public places. This was a law which came out in 2003, 
a national law which had much more products not just cigarettes and had other provisions also and not so what so what was the uh, objective of this act it is given in the preamble so whenever you open the court power law read the first page the first page says ensure effective protection protection to non smoker and to protect children and young who are addicted to so what are the objectives non smokers protect them specifically protect children and youth and then prohibit consumption and also in achieving article 47 of constitution of india which is uh, improving public health so these are the basic concept of this law and this law has four main provisions prohibits smoking in public place second prohibits direct and indirect advertisement of tobacco products prohibits sale to minors prohibits sale within 100 yard of educational institution and has health warning on tobacco products so four main provisions ban on smoking in public place ban on tobacco advertisement ban on sale to person below the age of 18 years and warning on pack simply if you put it so uh, uh, that's the core area of the act and these are uh, and the to watch to which product this act applies to is given in the end and uh, which is cigarette cigar bidi gutka pan masala chewing tobacco all list so there are 10 items in that list which is given just for clarification because there's a whole lot of legal argument going on in courts and we are fighting in the courts gotpa is only applicable if the product is legal if the product is illegal then the product then gotpa is not applicable gotpa has been brought to discourage tobacco use and not to encourage so nowhere if there is somebody somebody says that we are protected by cotpa if you, or if you pick up packet they say we come under cotpa it is basically a some kind of a subterfuge to protect an illegal product like an i give you an example is cotpa said tooth powder containing tobacco now tooth powder containing tobacco was banned in the drugs and cosmetic in the 90s so it's not a legal product so cotpa even if it's mentioned there it would not make it legal so cotpa only applies if the product is illegal because cotpa does not ban the pro production cotpa only says you cannot use it here and you uh, and uh, uh, and you cannot sell it to the children etc so the whole idea is to discourage tobacco use it's for discouraging and not prohibiting that's it i have already mentioned why we have a law on smoking in public places that's because it's a violation of article 21 right to life so just skipping to so this is section 4 that's the first main section of the act which says no persons shall smoke in any public place then it goes on to give certain exemptions which says that hotel having 30 or more rooms restaurants having 30 or more seats and airports can have a smoking area so uh it is it says may it's not doesn't say shall so it's not a compulsory provision that's the first thing you have should have in mind so uh but this exemption is creating problems and therefore for a strong law you cannot have exemption because especially for the enforcement agency it becomes a problem also the fine is only up to 200 years but that was uh, 200 rupees that was because it came out in 2003 but now after 20 years you need to kind of revise but the law as it stands to this prohibits smoking in public place public place is any place where public can go as matter of right and uh, the open air is not a public place that they consider that's one thing the second thing is that uh, certain public places like hotel restaurant airport there are certain provision of having a smoking area so uh, like i said public place is defined in the act which means uh, which uh, which says uh, any place where public can go as matter of right and includes auditorium building so uh, just to clarify even if the product is not listed because you know uh, it's all exhaustive so even if the product uh, even if the place is not even if the place is not listed it and and there is and there is a chance or danger of uh, you know public being exposed to second hand smoke 
it would be considered a public place. So though there are listing only of, you know, hospital, auditorium, public offices and all, but a lot of places like Mall Road of all hill stations, if you go to Shimla, if you go to Masuri, if you go to other hill stations, you'll find they're all declared public places and banned. Because though they are open, the fact that the, there is so much of, uh, you know, movement there on the road, the people are exposed to smoke. So the basic uh, definition of public places means any place to which the public have access, whether it's of right or not. And then certain places are included. So that's it. Open space is, uh, has been left out, but uh, it has been clar clarified that stadium, railway station, bus stop, and other such places are not public. Places. So there are time and again gap to be given. Even restaurant has been defined to include all places and also places surrounding restaurant. So if you see most of the restaurant, what they do just outside the gate, they give you a smoking area or on the roof. Th those are all illegal. So the law is there, the rules are there, which prohibits uh, smoking in public places. Exemptions are there, and then there are clarification given. One more clarification which is given is the, uh, you know, smoking area or, 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 you know, how you should implement the law. So every law only gives you a general example. Like they say, no smoking in public place. But as if I'm a, a state nodal officer, how will I implement that law? So to make it easier, they come out with rules. Rules will give you description. Okay, so here's example of the rule. 2008 rule, they say, uh, you will have a board in the no smoking area. You will see that there are no cigarette butts or butts there. You will say there are no ashtray or lighter there. So these are the uh, ways to implement, these are the ways to implement that law. So that is given in the, so the law in the act, parent act is very small. But the details of how they have to be implemented is given in the rules. And this is how the rules, some of the part that rule says that every owner or proprietor of a manager place must show that they have a board uh, of 60 by 30 centimeter that you see, which says no smoking area. And the person to whom you can make complaint to, there should not be any uh, remnants of smoking. You should not have any ashtray lighters, etc., to facilitate smoking. So these are certain uh, facilitatory guidelines given in the rules. Then coming on to the smoking area part. So like I said, three places you can have smoking area, restaurants, hotels, and airports. And for that also, the government came out with rules giving guidelines. And the rule says that these places should have pro be properly ventilated. Smoke should not go to non-smoking area. It should have ad automatically closing door. It should have an airflow system that has a negative air pressure so that it does not mix with non-smoking area. No service. This is very important. In smoking area, you cannot have any kind of service. So all this place where you see hookah being served or food being served is completely illegal. Then you need to have a board which says on the smoking area, which says outside smoking area that Tobacco smoking is harmful to you and to your health and the health of non-smoker. And entry of person of below age 18 years is prohibited. So these are part of all, uh, all these are part of the uh, regulation that restricts the use of smoking area. But I would like to clarify to you that I don't even, I mean, I think union did a major survey and 99% of them were non-compliant. So there is a law which, which gives you exemption, and this exemption is being misused. There are guidelines and rules to, re, you know, to somehow regulate that exemption, but it's not being successful. And these are certain examples. So here, what you see is the door is open, you can easily see smoking. Here you see a smoking area along with a pharmacy. There also there's a gap. You have a shop here. This smell, the smoke. All these people who are eating in the food eatery for food eating, they're all exposed to dangerous smoke. So uh, the whole purpose of protecting a non-smoker is being defeated by giving an exemption. So if you see the exemption is overpowering the main objective of the act. So that's what, uh, so these are the facts that it's now time that you do away with that exemption. 
of the smoking area. So none of the smoking area come, are compliant with the rules because it's very impossible to do so. The other manifestation of this uh, exemption is rise of hookah bars. So you have a lot of places where they take license to serve food. But in that garb, they say, the law allows me to have smoking area. And then they provide you a hookah on every table. So the whole, uh, so the exemption now has become uh, a major problem for uh, the rise in hookah bars. So how have states government tackled it? So we have almost 10 states, including Punjab, that have amended the law. So the Quad 2003 law has been amended by several states to insert a provision which says that uh, running of hookah bar is illegal. So uh, I'll go back again and say that it's time the law is changed because these exemptions are becoming a major problem. And uh, one of the issue is that the state government themselves have come together to, to amend the law. So an amendment can also happen by the state government, but it requires to be sent for president approval. So in these states that I've counted, Gujarat, Maharashtra, Rajasthan, Punjab being one, where they have actually amended to ban hookah bars and the president has given its approval. So now coming on to the second part of my uh, uh, the, the uh, provisions and the, one of these uh, main provisions of the act is, if you read the act, the title, the title says prohibition of advertisement. Title may likha, prohibition of advertisement. If you see, read the preamble, it says, Eliminate all tobacco advertising and promotion. So preamble also says, eliminate all. So section five is a follow-up on that. So I the basic question is, why do you want to ban advertisement of tobacco products? And the answer is in two judgments that has come out, one from Supreme Court and one from High Court. The fact is, you must know that tobacco is a very addictive substance. You don't require advertisement. If I smoke, I don't need to see advertisement. Even if you put a hard warning, I the addiction and nicotine uh, need of my body is such that I'll, if the even if I have to travel 30 kilometer, 40 kilometer, I'll travel and get that cigarette and smoke it. So who are these advertisements for actually? They are only for attracting the young and gullible to the world of tobacco. And like the high court said, catch them young, is the motto of tobacco industry. So the whole concept of advertisement of tobacco is only to attract the young. This has been confirmed by court. This has been confirmed by surveys. I'll show you images which will make it clear. So under no circumstances, I mean, this is this provision, uh, there should be any advertisement of tobacco because it defeats the entire tobacco control program if you allow advertisement of tobacco. That's my concern. And it is very clear the advertisement are mostly meant for children. So what does the law say? The law bans tobacco advertisement, uh, uh, whether direct or indirect. So direct is that I'm directly advertising a cigarette brand. Indirect is I'm advertising the, the cigarette product or I'm advertising a non-tobacco uh, product like, you know, uh, your uh, tea or something or uh, elaichi or something, or mouth, or mouth freshener or something, where the brand name and logo would be some. So both are banned. Direct and indirect advertisement are banned. There's a ban on display of uh, advertisement on hoardings. Then there is a very general provision which we use for regulating uh, tobacco you know, consumption is ban on promotion of any trademark or brand name of tobacco product in exchange for sponsorship of quiff. And there's a and and no person under you know under contract or otherwise shall promote tobacco use. So there's a very general provision added that you cannot promote tobacco use under no circumstances. So no, so that's the basic. If you see uh, the preamble, the title of the act, even section five says there should not be tobacco, uh, direct or indirect advertisement under any circumstance. But then again, here's another problem they added. And this is, I probably feel that this was done in 2000 because it's a 20 years or act. 
maybe at that time didn't realize this was on the request of the industry or what, but they have added this provision that at point of sale or shops or warehouse where tobacco products are basically stored or sold, you can have advertisement. So here also, like section four, a certain exemption is given. So main place, like if I, you know, you must be thinking, if this person is saying direct and indirect advertisement is banned, but I see advertisement everywhere, wherever I go in the city. That's because of this exemption, which allows advertisement at point of sale. So after four or five years, government realizes that they have done a mistake. This exemption is becoming a problem. So what they do is they again come out with regulation which say, okay, you can advertise, but the board has to be of this size, you know, 60 by some 45. You need to have uh, saying tobacco causes cancer and don't uh, mention brand name, just mention weed cigarette candy types, you know, just product name and no illuminated, backlit, etc. So this is the law, this white board, but in nowhere in the country I have seen this. So what is the whole uh, message that is going on? If the problem is in the main law, you cannot have it corrected through rules. You have to correct it through, by removing it from the law because there's a gap, there's a confusion in the mind of enforcement agency. So the law says you need to have this board, but the reality is that you see this board. These are certain... Uh, pictures that you need to have in mind and why I'm saying is these now the concept of advertisement has changed. You see, it's no more the boards. Boards are not there. It's all posters and somehow sometimes LED screens and whose eye level these posters are of children. It's specifically, we've done survey specifically at the eye level of children. And another shocking is that whenever you visit a tobacco shop, you see these boxes of toffees and candies. They are all manufactured by tobacco companies. So tobacco company to lure children have advertisement at their level and have products that they manufacture are mostly meant for children. To, to make my contention more stronger, I'll, 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 I'll show you another image, which is this one which is a rack which is provided by tobacco industry to the retail shop. So most of the general shop owners are given this, you know, some sort of standy or rack, which has very clear instruction to put only children's stuff, toffees, candy, etc. And it has a display board, which has packets of cigarettes. A whole system mechanism is, look how perverse it is, is only reflecting to reach out to children. That's how it is. And that's how when you do an advocacy, you need to be very strong on that. You look, they're only targeting children. And this is, these are some examples. I mean, uh, I, I'm somewhere recently, I also heard that, you know, Elaichi has been used by us for ages. It's in every kitchen. Do you think we need an advertisement for Elaichi? Everybody knows you're advertising this product, which is illegal. Even Cheney, Cheney, you know, mouth freshener, you're advertising this. The color, the name, the presentation is all similar. This is in violation of the entire law. So this is there. So one is targeting children, the other is surrogate actors. Uh, BD is considered to be a poor man, this thing, but uh, these are advertisement, surrogate advertisement of BD companies. And this is one of the schemes that they did where any, anybody who bought the BD pack called Raja Bidi, Kaja Bidi, sorry, uh, of South in, uh, you know, Tamil Nadu. And this, they could go to Malaysia if they went. So a Bidi smoker normally is supposed to be a poor man, this thing. The promotion is that you could go to for a foreign trip if you win the thing. And then these are, these are all, uh, uh, you know, violation and uh, a way to promote uh, the sales. Linked to this is the film rules. This again, like I said, is based on scientific evidence. There was a survey done of films uh, by one of the leading uh, NGOs of, uh, you know, Punjab called Burning Brains, uh, this thing, Dr. Hemant Goswami. He did a survey of films which was released in 2000, uh, before 2003, before this law came, and films which came out later, 
And in, when you compare this to, and this was done for WHO, when you compare the two studies, you realize there was almost 80% increase in the smoking of, uh, by depiction of tobacco smoking, especially by lead actors. And it also showed that there was product placement. So advertisement to nahi kar sakte the. So what they start doing is, as I just said, this is from a movie called Swadesh. So whenever somebody is picking up, you can read the label. This is again industry tactics to promote. So what does government does? They came out with a law in 2005, went through court cases, and finally, after seven years, they have this law. The law says that every film which is showing tobacco use has to have a health spot, means those anti-warning, uh, you know, anti-tobacco uh, advertisement, it should have a disclaimer uh, in the beginning and middle, and a static message when the movie is going on. So this is a hundred second in each movie we have of purely tobacco, anti-tobacco advertisement, if you're showing tobacco use. So that's the rules, regulation, effective for more, more than 10 years. There is a ban on tobacco product placement like this of Sudesh and uh, showing posters and promos having tobacco use. So that's the ban on that one. So this is what I meant by disclaimer. So this uh, disclaimer has to be there in every film showing tobacco use. And then this kind of health spot and messages. And then this white thing, when, whenever tobacco smoking is going on, you need to have this kind of scroll in the between. So this is the law for films that are screened in theater and in television. But again, the time has evolved. Now we are looking at OTT, over the top streaming medium. Our law of 2012 does not deal with the new medium and therefore time to change the re regulation to extend. And why I'm saying so, because the amount of school children in uniform being shown smoking has increased 100 times. And then there are specific scenes inserted where they, man, they make fun of tobacco control laws. So there's a very grave situation is there. Uh, there. And then there are sponsorship of series like this is by Vimal Gutka. So this is being sponsored also. So sponsorship, showing children smoking and making fun of tobacco control laws. These are very prominent things that you would see on OTT platform. Government is considering, uh, you know, regulating OTT also for these things. So coming on to the third part, which is sale, prohibition on sale to minors and the uh, prohibition of sale to minors and the reasoning so why do you think there is a prohibition that you should not sell to some between a uh, person below the eight of 18 years or so? This again, I say is based on scientific evidence. There was science, there was survey, everything where they found that if you protect a person to a certain age, there are very less chances that he will take up the, ha the habit at the later stage. So based on that, they fixed the time, you know, this thing that person below that should not be given access to tobacco. That's the scientific reason behind having, you know, prohibition of uh, uh, sale to person below the age of 18 years, that if you protect them till that year, there are less chances they could pick up because most of the people if you who are users, they will tell you they started in school colleges. So that is why this was made. This was a very good intention. So suppose you protect them to a certain age, the prevalence would automatically come down. So the law is in two part, A and B. A part says no sale to person below the age of 18 years, which are minors. And B part says no sale within 100 yard of educational institution. If you just implement the B part, there'll be no sale of tobacco product because educational institution means your nursery, your college, your schools, your intermediate schools, everything. So laws are very strong. And therefore, uh, and uh, it needs to be strongly implemented. And here in this case, you every place, shop needs to have this board which says no sale to minors with the pictorial warning and this another board, uh, no sale within 100 yard of educational institution. The fine is very less. The fine is only up to 200 rupees. Here again, just to enlighten you, I would say, that the Juvenile Justice Act, which came out in 2050, has increased this fine under their law to 1 lakh rupees 
and seven years imprisonment. So now the times are changing and your uh, way of talking should also change. Now tobacco is being equate, equated in the courts, in the new laws, similar to psychotropic substance. I think that is the narrative that you should take from here and not lose it. This is a common thing. You used tobacco and then you used drugs. So it should be under those footings. So law that are so strong for drugs should also be applicable to tobacco. So uh, now the uh, fifth, uh, the fourth and the last part is that we have and which India is very good and almost uh, five to ten sections of this COTPA is dedicated to having warning on practice. So section 7, 8, 9, 10 of the law, uh, Act says there should be a warning on every tobacco practice. Warning should be pictorial, which there should be a picture. Warning should be big. Warning should contain uh, you know, statement which uh, should not contain statement which detracts from warning. So these are things which given in the section. Then, but warning hoga kaise? But the, what would be the image of the pictorial? That came out in 2008 in the uh, pictorial health warning rules, which is also called specified health warning rules. So the first image, this is the first pictorial image in Indian packets, which said that 40% of one side of pack, you can have this warning. After almost six years, this law was changed and 40% of one side became 85% of both sides. When this was announced in 2014, uh, out of those countries that I was mentioning, you know, in, under FCTC, India was in the third position. So in the entire world, we were in the third of having the strongest warning on tobacco pack. So presently, the warning is like this. Every packet should have an image, these images are tested and, uh, you know, uh, field tested and on, on their impactability. Uh, so the image of cancerous mouth is there. The second part is a static message, uh, which is, uh, 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 you know, the health warning message, which says tobacco causes painful death. And the third part is a quit line number. So three part, 60% image, 25%, you need to have a text message, text warning, and a quit line number. And are they impactful? Yes, because the Global Adult Tobacco Service of 2017 said that almost 62% of the cigarette smoker and 54% of weed smokers thought of quitting after looking at these warnings. So they are impactful. This is a whole journey that I think we should all see as to where we started. We started with this pack of 1975. Cigarette smoking is injurious to health. All, it took us almost decades to come to this in 2008. And then we had images change. And finally, in 2014, on uh, 15 onwards, we have this. And uh, in 2023, latest warning is the one that you see in here. But this again, there's no exemption. But because there is no clarity on single sticks, nine, majority or almost 90% of the sale uh, majority of the sale are happening uh, through loose packet. So, but, uh, and loose packet has two disadvantages. One, you don't see the warning, and the second, that uh, the uh, uh, the it is easily uh, accessible to children. So, most of the children, if you ask a person, youth age, how did you pick up smoking? They would say we bought it loose because entire packet is very costly. So, one cigarette is easy. So, leads to problem. One is. Uh, easy accessibility uh, is, is there and the uh, other is you don't get to see the warning. The second problem is the smuggled cigarette. There also the problem is you don't get the warning, see the warning and uh, the government does not receive any tax. So these are disadvantage of uh, loose and smuggled product being sold. The state government, uh, you know, uh, there I think Punjab also came out with orders. These are of two states where they said that uh, loose sale is violation of section 7 and they try to ban it but uh, we've not had any instance of uh, implementation. Punjab government also used other laws like legal metrology but this is one gap that needs to be corrected if we are looking at a larger picture. Now coming on to the, uh, the penalty under this law so there are four sections like I said 4, 5, 6 and 7. 
4 and 6 are compoundable means you can pay fine and the uh, offense is done away with. So 200 rupees fine is there for violation of 4, which is smoking in public place <laughs> or CL2 minus. So these fines are there up to uh, 200 rupees. It's a compoundable offense. Up fine they can shoot. But fine is very less uh, considering the recent times. Uh, if you see other laws, the fine is much, much, much stronger. If you sell it, give it to a children. Suppose you give alcohol to children. It's, the fine is much more stronger. So that's there. Even the Juvenile Justice Act, even giving tobacco, the fine is 1 lakh rupees. So the fine is very less and it's 20 years old, needs correction. The, uh, the second part is the uh, section 5 and 7, which are non-compoundable offense, means ki you have to follow a proper procedure. And you have to go with a team. You have to seize the material. You have to seal it. You have to make a panchnama. You have to uh, take photographs and all that compile and file a complete case before the judicial magistrate. So the whole procedure has to be followed. So what is the problem in this procedure is that after all the trouble of filing and everything, the fine is only up to 1,000 rupees. And uh, in certain judgment that has come from Himachal, this is very discouraging that you follow a whole process of take your time and follow a whole process of prosecuting the offender. And because the deterrent is so less, the fine is so less, the, it does not have the direct impact. So the message is, like I said, Remove the exemption that is there given in the law. And second is make the penalty much more stronger. So coming on to the last slide is that this is what the government is planned. And uh, this is where we all come together. Uh, the state governments are also doing their bit. We've all, uh, the state nodal officer, everybody has to come together and ask for passing of this bill. So this bill came out in 2020. Presently, it is under public consultation, seeking comments. There were a lot of comments sent. So what does this bill say? If this bill rem uh, removes smoking area from restaurants, hotel, and airport. So that exemption I showed to you, and its manifestation I showed to you in hookabas, etc. The proposal is to delete it. So that's one major uh, uh, proposal there in the section four. The, se the second part is that the second uh, major proposal under this amendment bill of 2020 is that the advertisement which is allowed, the proviso which allows advertisement at point of sale, at shops, at warehouse, the proposal is to delete that proviso. So the ban on advertisement would be complete. There is no exemption. So both four and five exemption have been taken away. Now, for six, what they have done, they have increased, proposed to increase the age from 18 to 21 years. So that, that there's much more people can be, you know, in the three years you can contact. So if you protect till 21, there are zero possible chances of person picking up that habit. So that's the third big proposal. Firstly, deleting the exemption. Secondly, increasing the age. And then uh, loose sale has been banned. So this is also under Section 7, insertion is there, no sale of loose tobacco product. So that's also banned. And penalty has been increased a lot. The 200 fine is gone to 2,000 rupees. The, uh, and for Section 6, it is made similar to Juvenile Justice Act. You have fines up to 1 lakh rupees and two years imprisonment. Then there is also ban on illicit trade of tobacco product. So all these good, so like, uh, if my, I will ask you, what is the takeaway home? From 75, you see as an, uh, but the evidence are coming, the scientific evidence is coming. First evidence came of lung cancer. There was a law that said that anybody who's smoking should be aware that it can cause cancer in injurious to health. So the first emphasis was alert the consumer. Second emphasis when the scientific study came out that secondhand smoke causes damage to the non-smoker. So in this case, he's not the consumer. So what do you do? You ban smoking in certain areas. That's the new law come. The third is, in 2003, when you have laws which are dealing with the, you know all different kinds of tobacco products, there's a whole to discourage it. Now we've gone to the fourth part. And the fourth part is our latest, latest stage where we have identified the gaps. And now it's time, the journey has to end where 
all these gaps have to be removed and the law, laws have to be, be made stronger to protect the future generation. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for your excellent presentation. Uh, the key message which I uh, understood that uh, the tobacco industry is taking up uh, cash them young, and we need to product, uh, protect our, uh, our youngsters so that they do not get into this, uh, this thing. Now I would request uh, Mr. Rajiv uh, for moderating the session. Uh, Doc Sanchika, I think I am afraid because we are already uh, running uh, late. So we can Thanks. take up question answers uh, through mail and uh, Rajiv can uh, uh, propose a vote of thanks. But before that, I like to thank some stalwarts who have uh, actually joined Dr. P.C. Gupta, Dr. Rakesh Gupta, Binoy, Ramesh Gandhi, uh, Grover, uh, Shekhar Grover, Dr. Shekhar Grover, and many more. I can't name all, but uh, I'm really thankful to all those who have joined. And I'll just uh, ask for a short comments from uh, Dr. Rana, Dr. P.C. Gupta, Dr. Rakesh Gupta. So very, very short, crisp comments, please. Uh, yeah, Dr. Rana, oh, yeah. yes, yes, thank you. Thank you very much. So I think uh, <laughs> the way Ranjit has explained us all the journey of uh, tobacco control laws, not only COTPA, how that all started and what is the science behind this uh, legislation. So I think uh, he has covered everything. Uh, what, uh, what we saw when we all came into tobacco control, so that is about the journey of its implementation. If you ask me, what is the level of implementation? What is the journey? as far as implementation and, and enforcement of uh, various provisions of COTPA. Ranjit mentioned about section four, that is smoke-free, section five, section six, A and B, and section seven. So yes, really yes. it has remained a challenge. Uh, section four, that is smoke-free, that was the most popular uh, uh, policy provision which was adopted by the states and districts across the country. Many cities became smoke-free. They effectively implemented their uh, Section 4 of COTPA, no smoking at public places. So your city of Chandigarh is, uh, is, uh, is the first uh, city in addition to uh, Junjunu in, uh, in the state of uh, Rajasthan, uh, who are, who are uh, the uh, uh, beginners as far as enforcement of legislation is concerned. So both cities, uh, they try to become smoke-free thereafter, Kota Yam. Then again, Punjab again took lead as far as Mohali in 2010, city of Shimla, Bhuvaneshwar, Kota Yam, Vilupuram, Coimbatore. So one by one, many cities implemented section four of Kotpa. So now, now you must be seeing that people are now avoiding smoking at public places. So this is a good change as far as law implementation is concerned. Second part is uh, second is uh, related to section 6A and B. So uh, sale to and buy minors. Yes, it has, there is uh, some good level of uh, implementation of section 6A and B. Five, section five, there should not be any kind of advertisement at, uh, uh, Ranjit has mentioned, uh, told us what various kinds of advertisement, direct advertisement, indirect advertisement, promotion, sponsorships. So overall, yes, there is good progress, but a lot more needs to be done. So at each state and district level and city level, we need to have enforcement teams uh, who can effectively implement the law. We also need to monitor implementation of uh, various laws through various compliance studies. Again, state of Punjab has done many, many compliance studies. I think 50 plus compliance studies have been done by state of Punjab and uh, almost 400 plus studies have been done across the country. So there is no uh, 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 use of having laws until unless they are effectively enforced. So I think uh, uh, this is uh, something which I would like to share with you our journey of enforcement. 
no more than 200 cities and districts they have become they have declared themselves as a smoke free city they have achieved high level of compliance and people are not smoking at public places wherever they are smoking yes no uh, there is a enforcement teams which which are really active in many cities who are there to to stop people from stopping uh, to use uh, to, uh, smoking at public places and there is also behavior change you must be seeing whether it is in buses whether it is in uh, hotels restaurants so overall there is a change a good change so we let's hope uh, that we have a good enforcement of this law also so thank you very thank much you. over to you oh thank you dr rana I think uh, we can ask uh, uh, Dr. P.C. Gupta to please comment on it. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Rakesh. Uh, yes, I, I, okay, I can make just a couple of comments because of uh, time also. I know uh, Ranjit gave a very good presentation, uh, concise explanation of all the laws. And he started uh, with the uh, uh, statement about the necessity for the laws. So I just want to add to that, it's not just the health effects and the knowledge. Uh, we have understood over decades since that we know since 60s, that just the knowledge and awareness does not change. Uh, habit does not uh, reduce the tobacco use prevalence. In fact, since 60s, right up to 21st century, even now, overall tobacco use prevalence in the world is going up. It has not gone down so far. So you need something else and that is because of the social engineering that industry does for uh, come creating myths and popularizing, glamorizing the tobacco. And laws are there to reduce that aspect because everything else, they also reduce the uh, social accept acceptability of tobacco. And that's one of the major uh, <clears throat> reason, major accomplishment of those laws. And although Ranjit gave a complete gist of the laws, uh, think about what happened before the law actually came into the force. Ranjit knows it very well that each law was fought very bitterly, you know, right from the yeah. time when the law or the rule was getting framed to the point that it got notified. In between, there were huge number of obstacles and the last obstacle, of course, being court case, where tobacco industry files a court case in, in not only in court, somewhere in number of courts, wherever it can get anything like a, a favorable uh, judgment. So it's a, it's a very important journey. It has been a very, it has not been easy and we have to still keep on fighting it. As Ranjit said, we have uh, this uh, amendments that have come and we have to be prepared uh, for getting them through. And as Ranjit has always said, we have to keep on emphasizing that this, these laws are completely based on scientific evidence for the protection of public health. They are not just like any other laws. So thank you all very much for your attention. Uh, thank you, Dr. P. C. Gupta. So I'll request uh, Dr. Rakesh Gupta from Jaipur for very <clears throat> quick, just a minute, uh, uh, he can take for comments. Thanks, Dr. Rakesh Gupta. Seconding the comments made by Dr. Rana and Dr. Gupta, sir. I just have to say that uh, in the provisions of law, can the accountability of the enforcers also be added in the amendment one? And secondly, I consider that um, the if the amendments are waiting for so long in the parliament, can there be legal provisions under the constitution that the government can be asked for as to why it is delaying the amendments? So these are two questions for Ranjit. Uh, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Yeah. Very valid uh, question, sir. You have uh, put across. So thanks a lot. So I would have actually requested all the participants to please uh, say something about it. But uh, I'm sorry that we are already late by 10 minutes. And uh, uh, I'll request all people to just uh, switch on their videos for a snapshot. And after that, there will be a vote of thanks, a formal so, vote of thanks by so, Rajiv. So, so, just, so just, just, just a uh -huh. second, sir. I'll just add to. Uh, sure, sure, yes. sure. 
one question no. so yes yeah. uh, uh, so uh, presently in the bill there is no provision on imposing liability on the law enforcers there is one that if you remember we have added in the rules of 2008 prohibition of smoking in public place but this one does not have and in this case uh, uh, some sort of legal action unfortunately is there because this uh, bill has not moved to the parliament or it has not been tabled it's just been in the ministry and judiciary normally when it comes to framing they, they do not interfere they interfere when the law has to be uh, interpreted so that's the uh, reason on the policy issue but uh, it's a high time that we'll have to kind of take active and yes there should be some liability on the enforcers if they're not doing it thank you ranjit and i'll request all to please switch on their uh, videos so that we can just click a group photograph so sanjika can you take a photograph yeah sure sir just let me know when it is done then you can invite uh, rajiv for the vote of thanks yes it's done i would request mr rajiv for the vote of thanks for the session thank you dr sanchita for giving this opportunity so i would like to uh, start with the thanks of our, our uh, chief guest dr adarsh pal kaur ma'am uh director health services punjab and uh, she is uh, with us uh, from the beginning and uh, uh, till ma'am is here with us so thank you ma'am for uh, joining us today for this important uh, discussion and uh, thanks to dr jashkaran kaurdeep ma'am uh, this is the state nodal officer for punjab and uh, one and only uh, the speaker of the day uh mr ranjit singh ji and uh, ranjit sir uh, you have explained very very nicely and uh, very comprehensive presentation today and i hope uh, the audience will get to know about uh, each and every component of the kotpa uh, the cigarette and tobacco control act uh, very details thank you for uh, this nice presentation today and uh, thanks to our uh, the organizing team uh, leading by dr rakesh gupta sir Uh, Dr. Sanchita from Eco India, uh, Arun Verma sir, <coughs> Nadeep, and uh, <coughs> for uh, uh, making this event uh, very successful. And a special thanks to our uh, very eminent, uh, uh, I would say the 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 leader of this uh, tobacco control, uh, starting from Dr. P. C. Gupta sir, Dr. Rana J. Singh sir, and Dr. Rakesh Gupta. and all other senior people those who are joining from across country for this uh, important discussions thank you sir for joining us today and it is uh, a very informative session by the uh, the speakers and we are hoping for the next uh, series of these webinar will be a more fruitful and uh, more informative for the audience so thank you sir for joining us today and uh, we assure you Yeah, so thank you, and uh, over to the host, uh, Dr. Sanchita. Thank you, Mr. Rajiv, for the vote of thanks. Now, just a minute. Uh, I would like to inform about our next session. It is on twelfth of May. That is Wednesday, four p.m. And the topic is ends ban in India. And our so and our subject matter expert will be Dr. Rakesh Gupta, president of Cipher. So uh, we will see you again on Wednesday, uh, same time. Thank you so much for joining us today. thank you thank you thank so you. much thank you all thanks all thank you